Americans go to the polls this week in what is shaping up to be a potentially historic midterm election that will determine the political makeup of Congress. While recent surveys show that small business owners are optimistic about the economy, they also show deep skepticism about whether Washington will fix problems that directly affect them. As they head to the ballot box, government regulations and health care weigh heavy in the minds of America's small businesses and entrepreneurs. Rick Newman covers business and economic trends for Yahoo Finance, and Jay Goltz is the CEO of the Goltz Group. He owns and runs five businesses. Jay is also a small business blogger for the New York Times. So good to see both of you guys. Hey. Great to be here. All right, Jay, I want to start off with you. If you, we're, we're going to go through just a list of things small businesses should be thinking about as they go to the polls. So let's just start with one of them, anyone you want. Uh, immigration reform. Uh, they've been talking about it for years. It is a real problem. We interview people all the time. We like them. We go to put them through E-Verify, and it doesn't go through. And we've had people literally sitting in the office crying, saying, my father told me this was straightened out. You know, I've been in this country for 32 years, and it's, it's a problem. And it's bad for the economy. It's bad for the workforce. It's, it's a problem. And they keep saying they're going to fix it, but they haven't. All right, Rick. So our crystal ball, is anything going to move forward? The crystal ball is pretty cloudy. Uh, so we're, let's assume we end up with a uh, Republican-controlled Senate. We're going to have divided government just as we've had for several years now. Um, so I don't think we're going to see any big breakthroughs at all. One big thing for businesses I think they can look forward to is the absence of self-destructive antics like shutting down the government, threatening to default on the debt. If Republicans control both houses of Congress, they can't let that happen. If they want to persuade voters, they can actually run things. Mm -hmm. And they have to do that going into the 2016 election. So that's good news. That removes some of the uncertainty that business owners complain about a lot, very legitimately. Uh, immigration reform is really hard, really complicated. I think it's unlikely we'll see anything before, on that before 2016. We could see a few other small things happen, uh, you know, fiddling on the margins, if you will. Okay, so let's talk about things that could happen, yep. that small businesses care about that could happen. Right. Well, businesses say, you know, their top three concerns are they want more revenue. I don't think there's much the government can do about that. They want lower taxes. We are going to see a lot. We're going to hear a lot of talk about uh, corporate tax reform. I don't think it's going to get into in reforming the individual tax code too complicated to do in two years. Possible there could be some kind of corporate tax reform. President Obama has said he would accept a lower rate down to 28 percent. Republicans have said they want it lower than that. There is room to meet in the middle uh, if if there's a willingness to compromise. One p part of a compromise could be the minimum wage. That's another thing small businesses care about. That's a cost to small businesses. Uh, you know there are fast food workers agitating for. 50 Fifteen dollars an hour. I think there's no chance we're going to see a federal minimum wage there. But it's now uh, just above seven dollars. We could see it settle out around nine dollars. Uh, President Obama has asked for ten dollars and ten cents. You do see room for negotiation there. Americans do support, in general, uh, a higher minimum wage. So we could see some action on that. So you have faith that actually things will move forward. I would never say I have faith in Congress. <laughs> <laughs> These things are possible. Right. Uh, it, you know, a lot depends on uh, does either, each party see they have something to gain by doing something positive and proactive. Got it. Okay, Jay. What about loans? What about uh, small businesses out there looking for money? You know, I will tell you, I've done SBA loans. I'm doing one now. The SBA loan program is great. Uh, there's some tweaks there, though. Uh, if you had a 504 loan, they aren't allowing you to take money out of the, the building now if you're refinancing. And it's been, it's out there in Congress trying to, to bring it back to where you could get money out of it. And that should that would be helpful to businesses because there's the 504 loan program and then there's the 7A loan program where you can take money out but it's more difficult and a lot of the smaller banks don't have the facilities to do the 7A program so it would be helpful if they could just bring that back to where it was two years ago. You know what I find is for small businesses who are so steeped in getting so much stuff done Often you don't know something is a problem until you know it's a problem. So Jay, if you had never gone out to get an SBA loan, you might not even know what those numbers mean, right? And so you wouldn't even know to think about how your Congress person would vote, or you might not even know to think about how they care. So is there anything else that small business people just might not have on their radar that they should be very aware of right now when they're voting? I would say the, the Section 179 accelerated depreciation uh, was a great thing. It absolutely helped. You could deduct things if you bought a big piece of equipment. You could deduct it quicker. That uh, They restored it for this year, but it's questionable what's going to happen next year. That would be something. And, J.J., to your point, you're absolutely right. I wouldn't have known about the SBA program 
uh, issues if I wasn't in the middle of refinancing. So there are things like that out there that aren't going to cost the government any money. That you like the accelerated depreciation is just pushing forward the deduction. They're going to get their money in the back end. That's very, very helpful to small business. And it's frustrating that every year you don't know what they're going to be doing. One thing I would add is, uh, you know, we're having elections not just at the federal level, level but at the state level, yep. too. Uh, one thing that really is difficult for small businesses is the overlap of regulations. I mean, practically every business owner will tell you, you know, I'm dealing, I got, you know, I got the same pile of paperwork from the state and from the feds, and they overlap. It's extremely difficult to sort this out. I mean, a lot of these regulations are state level regulations and even local regulations. And, you know, we're so fixated on national politics that a lot of times you forget you maybe can make a little bit more of a difference uh, at the state and certainly at the local level. So it's very worthwhile to get involved there and see who's running what other policies. I, I think that is such a good point because it is true. So many of the small businesses that I talk to, the regulations on the local level are the ones that bog them right. down. And, and oftentimes they may make sense for big business and not for them, and yet they're still having to fill and out all the paperwork. And you can get involved at the local level. Yep. I mean, that's where, you know, government arguably works at the lower level in a lot of places. You can get involved and make your views known and maybe get something done to change them. All right. Well, Rick and Jay, thank you guys so much for having this discussion sure with us. We look forward to seeing what happens on Election Day. Thanks. Thanks, guys.